I know I shouldn't be critical with the Bible, but the other day I was. I was preparing for the big Easter sermon, reading Matthew 28, and something bothered me about Matthew's account. It's how much he talked about the Romans and how little he talked about Jesus. Let me show you what bothered me. Here in this Bible, this is the last full page of Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 28. And in Matthew chapter 27, he spends this whole chunk talking about the Romans. And he spends this section talking about the Romans. And he spends this whole section talking about the Romans. And I wanted to say to Matthew, hey, it's Easter. <laughs> Maybe you should talk a little bit more about, um, I don't know, Jesus. But then God helped me realize why my criticism wasn't valid and that maybe Matthew kind of knew what he was doing. Because here's what I realized. Back in the first century, for the original readers of Matthew's Gospel, what was their biggest fear in the world? The Romans. You know, these days we're pretty terrified of the corona pandemic, about infections and the curve that just won't flatten about cases getting closer and closer to home. We're worried about all the what-ifs, the domino effects. How is this going to change our world? But people 2,000 years ago weren't afraid of corona. They were afraid of the Romans. It was the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, that killed Jesus. It was the brutal Roman guards who had pounded the nails through Jesus' flesh. It was the Roman Empire that were still roaming the streets of Jerusalem where those early Christians lived. And I think that's why Matthew talks so much about the Romans. I love this little line here. Uh, The angel shows up and it says, The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. (laughs) Can you imagine being a first century Christian and reading those words? We're so afraid of the Romans, but then God sent one angel. (laughs) And when the armed Romans, the black ops of the ancient world, saw not glorious Jesus and not the whole army of angels, just one angel, they shook in fear. Oh, and I love that fact. It's like, here's us. Here's our greatest fear. But just one angel proves that we have nothing to be afraid of. Because if just one angel is that glorious and strong, imagine the God who created him. Imagine the God who is so strong and mighty and glorious and good that the whole army of angels bows their knee and worships him. Well, if that God was our God, then we would have no reason to be afraid. So, let me ask you today, what's your greatest fear? In the middle of this pandemic, what do you worry about the most? Is it the duration of corona? You know, what started as this novelty in the early days or weeks is now stretching into months and into a quarter. What what if this goes through the summer? How will that change weddings and concerts, family reunions and celebrations? What if there's a, a funeral in the family? What if the sports get canceled? What if the family is all cooped up for months and months and months to come? What then? That, that fear sounds big. And it would be big if God wasn't bigger. If just one of his angels wasn't bigger than that fear, we would be afraid. But Easter morning proves that we have nothing to fear. That the God who is running the show, he would make your greatest fears shake like those Roman guards. And so today, maybe joy isn't getting into your heart. Maybe that fear and worry and concern is like a guard that you just can't get past. Well, today I want you to confront that fear with God. (laughs) With the eternal, glorious, exalted, magnified, good, bigger than you thought, leave the caps lock on, God, let him confront your fear. The God who knows, the God who cares, the God who can, the God who controls, the God who loves, the God who persists, the God who endures, if that God actually is God, and he is, you have no reason to be afraid. Let that single angel from Easter morning Kick the guard out of your heart and let joy and peace come flooding in. We can't change Corona, but we can exalt the name of Jesus Christ. And once we do, we'll have no reason to fear.
Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you, not just for being alive, but for being better than we imagined. Uh, we can't see you, so it's easy to think less of you, but the angels of heaven, these glorious angels, they bow their knee and worship you. So the fact that you're with us, that you love us, that you control our future, that you're for us, that's what deals with our fear. I pray today, Heavenly Father, for those especially who have tender hearts. For my brothers and sisters who are prone to worry and what-if situations. Often they're thoughtful and compassionate and empathetic, but this can be the downside of that love. So Heavenly Father, help them. Dispel their fears, open their eyes to your presence and your glory. So like the women on Easter morning, we are reminded that we don't have to be afraid because we have you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for being with us. And I pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. So, I need your help. In the comments section below, I would like for you to type your greatest fear. If you're bold enough and courageous enough, I, I want you to type it out as many words as you need. And then at the end of it, I want you to put less than God. And together we can remind each other that no matter how big our fear, no matter how many words it takes, whatever it is, it is always less than our glorious, good, loving God. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for encouraging your brothers and sisters. And have a fearless day. Hey friends, you may or may not know that Time of Grace Ministries is 100% donor supported. You know what that means? We wouldn't be here without you. It means that there are a lot of souls out there that wouldn't be hearing the word of God from our ministry. And without you, thank you. Please continue to support the ministry. There are more souls that need the encouragement that you put us in a position to give. You can do that by clicking on the link.